So what I'm trying to explain to you and what I'm going to get across here is that now let me explain to you about what was going on, the spirits. I'm first going to talk to you about very briefly the first class of spirits. The first class of spirit or spirits of disincarnation are actually your closest relatives. It could be uncle, it could be grandma, great grandma, great 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 grandma. I think you could go back at least seven genera generations. Well, maybe not. You could go back at least three generations, four generations, five generations, six. Yeah, you can go about seven generations back before you get something that you do not recognize. It's on a whole different framework. You wouldn't even recognize grandma. Like, grandma, is that you? So in this particular spectrum that we're in, this stratum that we're actually in, when spirits depart from here, and this is deep knowledge, let me just, I'm trying to make this very clear for you. You need to understand that when you depart from here, if you have any regrets, okay, if you have any doubts, things that you actually still wanted to do or fulfill, if you have any guilt, okay, any judgments, okay, all this makes you heavy. It, it basically makes you fat, okay, if you want to look at it this way. And this doesn't allow you to get down this narrow tunnel. It's actually in the center of your brain, which I was talking about before. But the reality is, is that when you don't go, because there is no death, you kind of remain somewhere. And you can say this is your memories entangled with other people's memories, okay? And that starts to create a space because it actually is energy. It's done by a real being that knows how to project. And so instead of going into the next stage of things, some say that's the light, right? But instead of going into that and saying, you know what, I'm good. Because many people, when they see that, they're like, fuck it, hell. It's hell. I can't go to hell. I'm never going to see my kids again. I'm never going to be. And because they're always looking back, because they're not projectors, they weren't leaders. They were always in regret. They made, they made this reality make them believe they were making mistakes. When they were born into this sin, they were acting like it was theirs, like the sin, which is the flesh and the beast body. They were acting like the body was theirs. The body is not yours. That's why they were not the body. You're just taking care of this. You should lease it and use it very well. Maybe you'll get another one that's even more pristine. But the reality is this is not you. So that's the process. The person actually gets into a life and either through habits, you know, some people know how to break addictions. Some people don't have addictions. And some people are very, very prone to addictions. But when we say addictions, most people think that's just drugs. Some people are addicted to love. You're addicted to love. So then hate's going to come in, right? Because that's what comes next, right? There's no yin without a yang. All right? So what this is really about is, is this is about... If you don't realize this projection in this illusionary sphere and the whole purpose of why you got into this vehicle in the first place, you become a lost soul. You actually, instead of progressing to the next stage, hang around, kind of disincarnate, running around your memories. <laughs> and because you are now disincarnate, I meaning you don't have a physical body, your memories are actually housed in other beings that you had a connection with that you created with, that you made a contract with, that you had communion with, whether that's your daughter, whether that's your son, whether it's even your companies, your writings, all these different things that you had a communion with, that's what you're living through. So let's just talk about the physical beings, though, because when that's your family members, we're all family, that kind of gives everybody the divine right to do this. What would happen is, is that you can literally jump on to the next person as a spiritual being. And I just want to make this very clear before we move a couple layers up here. So meaning that if you want to, when you're on that disincarnated world, because you didn't want to progress on, connect with family, connect in unity, you thought you were going to miss out on the drinking and the clubbing and the partying. Remember, some people are more addicted than you, okay? So I'm like, man, you mean no more 12, shout mm, I'm going back in. I'm sure, like, I'm sure I can make something in there, okay? So when they do that, when they come back in, they just possess people. So when they want to drink, they find somebody else at the club that has got themselves open and resonating this vibration and they go right into them. And so you can imagine what it looks like on the back end. This is what I was trying to explain to people, but I only can use English, unfortunately. And when I do it in meditation, some people say they see me on the other side. But basically it equals where hospitals, graveyards, clubs, 
stadiums, and all these places have so many spirits running around. And I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not on the, the big boys yet. In the, in the demagogue, Gog Magog, Medellin, I'm not on to them yet. I'm just talking about Pookie. <laughs> I'm talking about Juan. I'm talking about Shaquita. I'm talking about Umbute. I'm talking about them, okay? Because we missed that. <laughs> we really missed that in spirituality. You got all these people talk about all this other stuff, but they're not telling you your ideas in your mind are actually coming from the ancestors that didn't, at minimum, are coming from the ancestors that didn't pass on. And when they have bad habits, like, see, great-great-granddad, if he didn't make it, because now every, you're going through a process, okay, from coal to diamond, okay? So that means that everybody started off with something that they needed to polish. But when you got great-great-great-granddad still wanting to pimp inside of you, you got great-grandmother still wanting to hopefully act, which is basically to prostitute virgins off to gin, <laughs> okay? When you still have them hanging around, this leads to suggestions to where you need a little bit of assistance sometimes driving your ship, meaning that after a while you get shipwrecked. This is what happens when you create too many marriages, too many relationships. You got one ancestor, they want to drink, but the other one wants to be a vegan. What's going to happen? Either way, you're going to piss one off. And that's what most people's minds are like. They have so many spirits that they're dealing with. No matter what they do, they can't seem to do their best. Have you ever felt like that? As soon as you do something, something's already back. Well, you should have treated them like that. Then the like, what the, what, the what do you mean you should have treated them? Look what they did. You are, are a weakling. I'm not weak. I'm compassionate. Now you see where this whole schizophrenia bipolar thing actually comes from? It's not just the spirits. It's even you rebuttaling the spirits as the prophet in your own body, like, no, no, that's not what's happening. I'm telling you, we keep in balance. Okay, that last night I wasn't keeping balance. She, we went in, but, you know, but you see, so all of that, though, ah, time draws nigh. Because that was their duty. Their duty was to distract. Distraction. It's like your wheel doesn't catch the road. Your motivation doesn't work. Like, you're slipping. Hey, man, child, you slipped. So you let so much time go by in the back and forth. But Raiders are 49ers, my nigga. Raiders are 49ers. You went back and forth. Mustang and Camaro, my guy. Shelby or Camaro. Okay? Kobe or Jordan. Okay? You went back and forth so much. Big E or Tupac. Which one? That you didn't know. That the Time Lords, the ones that I was pointing out, right? Why they always play around with clocks so much? <laughs> like, why is everything about clocks? I'm telling you, it's 60 and 100. Now, some of this stuff is just going to be uncoded, encoded, okay? I'll break it down later. 60, that's your time, right? 60 seconds. And then the other one is 100 or 50, more, more like 50. Because 50 always loves the devil himself. Like, I'm hunting. <laughs> and he can hold that because it's in that same procession. But I'm talking about 50 and 60. I'm talking about 5 and 6. Okay? 50 and those numbers, the, the, the denominators of 10, the denominators of 5 is all about money. Okay? That's why you don't even see $2 bills anymore. You don't see $3 bills. You don't see $4 bills. Right? You see 5, 10, 15, 20. And then in those increments. Right? Because that that's the Lord of the money. That's the moon. That's what I was saying. The moon, money, fertility, right? And then you got 60. Of, uh, uh, and some would say the greater God to rule the day and the lesser God to rule the night. But that, the God that wrote that book was the God from the sun. So he was like, yeah, he's lesser. But let me show you these gods. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for an image and maybe somebody can just source it on the Internet because I'm not going to spend all day looking for this. Do you see 
here. Actually, I have one here. So this will, you can go look for the other one. Okay, you see this? So the sun does this and the moon does this. Okay? And over a period. And what it creates is this number eight, which is our infinity. 88. Okay? The gate. So in this process, this is the deepest knowledge because... One rules the day and the other rules the night, and they draw out these infinity signs, okay? And in this procession, literally, you get to these crossing points where one becomes basically a worshiper of the day, and then the other one becomes the worshiper of the night, and this is the interchanging that's going on in the human body. Even, even when you're asleep versus you're in the day right now, you got to spend half of the day here, and then you're going to go spend half of the day at night. Let's say at the, end of the, at the end of the lifetime, that's what the balance is, is to make sure that you spend as much as in the time in the day as you did in the night. And in this part of the consciousness, I'm telling you, all of this system is designed now, first of all, to teach you. This is a very big lesson, the universe. I had to tip my hat to that. The universe is university is cold. Like, I was like, man, how are you... Man, I, I can only take notes, <laughs> literally. So the reality is, though, is that why this is happening, though, you got to realize this is also exhibited in nature. When seeds are about to become, basically eggs are about to, to hatch, like turtles, eggs. And then you get all these birds of prey. And this is what I'm, I'm showing you is happening right now. It's happening on the spiritual plane, plane. You get all these birds of prey that are actually trying to eat you now. Okay, this is a real thing. And how they're trying to eat you is by throwing you into conflict and to basically destroy you. It's not even going to be just you fell out with Quita again and you fell out with, with Tom. It ain't going to be just that. It's going to be that. It's going to be over. As you keep using the, divo the divorce energy, divor, okay, if you keep using the division energy, if you keep warring and dueling, right, they're going to eat you alive because that's how they live. That is what they do. And that's why I said they always cause confusion. That's why you can't even have a marriage. You can't have a relationship when you have a spirit in your life. Spirits are making decisions that you should be making. You're listening to them. What should I do? All back there, tucked up. You ever seen them get into somebody's mind? Really, he's all back there. You know, especially when it's about something. Somebody says something about you. Ah, somebody says something about you. How somebody know you and they don't even know themselves and you don't know who you are? I always say that, but think about it. So who are they really talking about? Themselves. You're playing with yourself, right? So the reality is here is that the division component, I'm not into it personally. This portal transfer is, this lesson, first of all, of 10 years was to teach me that, okay? Like I learned something, hopefully you learned something, okay? Now that I don't have a division and divisive forces in me and things talking to me that I don't know who they are specifically, that means that I, I can only continuously do what I've always been doing, continuously expanding, going up, learning more, loving more, having more compassion, being greater. That's all I've been doing. But don't be surprised if you start seeing a lot more jealousy, because that's why it says I put enmity between them. I put enmity between them. This means that I will put opposition between these brothers and sisters. Right. Oh, my brother, my brother, man, you ain't no brother fighting and cursing and arguing and killing and stealing. And you see what I mean? Because that's what's happening on the spiritual plane with your daggers and your words. Right. You ain't no sister. If you're over there backbiting, root digging up the seeds, aborting the, the wombs, you ain't no sister. Not of mine. So what we're inviting everyone to in this next stage if they can resonate, if they can make the transfer, is a much more proficient line of progression for us continuously as we narrow out things and actually really do decrease our footprints and start to get ready to make this passage in Exodus because the Exodus is only a reference to our process out of the womb. <laughs> the 40 days is the gestation cycle. You were in the water. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Getting manna down a tube. Oh, thank you, <laughs> whoever you are. And then you gestated that out the mouth of the serpent. And now here you are on its face. That's why they call it the surface 
the surface. You're on the serpent's face. And his eyes are the wormholes. And they tell you the black holes, the wormholes and the black holes, one going up, one going down. They're opening. I, right now, as we go into this full moon, it's happening right now. Even here in the country, they got the Semana Santa. This is the time that the Catholics took over it because they know it's a progression. It's the progression of Mary. Go into other countries. They got the same thing going on. But what are you doing? Watching Nipsey Hustle? <laughs> man, wake up, man. Let me go through this really fast. They're driving wedges, okay? And you can do it too. The division drives wedges. That's why they show you they got the thing in their hand. And in that hand, you see them even with the pine cone, like some of these pictures are even new. This cult, they're time travelers. They're using CERN as a time machine so they can keep updating this stuff. And every time you come back, you can come back next week and the pine cone will be missing, my guy. <laughs> know who you're dealing with. That's why they tell you we met, we're time lords. We do time. 60, 120, shamash. This is what they're about. And they got everybody in this projection. And where's everybody at on this tree getting twisted and turned and whirled, right? That's what's creating the cornucopic field that's around you. It's spinning, right? And then here you are with all these entities that are around you that are your family on this tree. But then you have these watchers, these other beings that intersect vertically into your space. And that's what I'm saying. Stop worshiping these beings, Stop worshiping. You're not getting anything. Worship, fight. That's what that means. Worship. These beings are real. I, I, hey, <laughs> like I say, it's like, well, Kevin, why are you t telling us this? What you, I'm, I'm telling you because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing divisive forces coming to the minds of people that you think love you and convincing them to do edgewise. And it hurts. It drives a wedge between you and them, and it creates a film, and that's only the beginning because this is not the first time they've done this. They've done this to billions of us. Trillions of us have been through this, and it's over. That's why I say today it stops, and you are the ripple effect. When you decide not to hate, when you decide to turn that energy back around, next time somebody asks you, man, what do you think about blah, 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 say, man, ask them. Turn that shit around right away. Do not allow people to get you in the cahoots of making judgments. Who are you? Why do you want to be the balance scale? Be the balance. <laughs> so anyway, what do I want to tell you? So many of your ancestors married, married off their seeds to spirits. Okay, now we got to go deeper. Okay, I'm not talking about your uncle. They're all part of it. They're part of the property. Just like military, the military contract says, they own your children. They own everything you produce once you actually make that contract. Okay? So to nullify, we'll talk about that later. Or maybe we won't. Like maybe you need to seek internally how to actually get your own divorce from some of these forces that you've been aligning with, these war forces. Right? Because this is the the war that is taking place in the division of the stars. Okay, this is like, oh, he's on my team and she's on my team and, oh, oh, and they're on my team. That's what created these religions. That's what created these, the, these things that are causing so much confusion between us. They've all now chose to take their own allotments. These people belong to me. This belongs to me. Right. So this is why this, this is real, man. You got to go with compassion. That's going to be your only compass design. You can't even move with love. Hate comes back. You got to move with compassion. You got to be like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. what's the individual record on this person? Hold on. <laughs> like uh, scales. Shoo, ancestors drop scales. Well, it looks like last time. Then, like, OK, great, great. OK. All right. Anyway, where are you at? Meaning actually do a thorough estimate of the people that you're involved in and the actions that are taking place in that, in that relationship that you're in with them and start weighing their asses. <laughs> Literally start weighing them and see if they're too heavy to actually fit into that next stage that you're going into, because if they're not, you're going to get left behind because you're going to be holding them back. This is a real conversation. You're going to be holding them back and you're going to be holding yourself back. OK, that kind of came out weird, but serious. Like if you don't let them go, how can they progress? That's a real thing. Like, look how the knowledge just turns itself on itself. It's like, no, you're holding them back. You think that they're holding you back, but you're holding them back. 
See, like when you come into truth and come into the higher stages that is there, it's available for you. It's always been aware. Do you think this stupidity created this? <laughs> no. Do you think that they were the part of the highest thing? No, they're all learning their lessons too. Many of them are sorry. You see what I mean? Stop trying to figure out what to do. Sore and sar are the same word. Sore. Ah, oh, it hurts. Pain. Sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm going to bow down to you, snake. Oh, yes. Lower body. Oh, yeah. How do you have your foot in your mouth? How do you have your foot in your brain? It's by letting the forces that should be driving you to the next stage actually control where you're going. Meaning that you, that's your feet. You got them in your mind. People got division. They got their feet in their minds. They're inverted, right? They always wonder, was he bad or is he good? What, what are you getting? <laughs> like, what is this benefiting you? Do you have something applicable to go with? Like every single day, we bring value into this reality. It's our pleasure. And we are low on dissension, meaning that I do my best to keep every single thing weaved together perfectly in this tribe. To let our fabric be a blanket for others. So to come and cut that blanket and to think it is your right. For us all to think it is our right to cut the fabric of our mother to C-set our own mother. How dare you? Check yourself. Do you not know how many different beings are in there? They're watching everywhere. It's like TV. This TV thing didn't start here. That's why they say eyeballs. You go to the world like, shit, eyeballs are everywhere. I don't feel comfortable. We're all, who do all these eyeballs belong to? Where are the bodies behind these eyeballs? Be like, um, mm, that was the whole thing. The bodies are kind of part of something else. We're all just eyeballs. <laughs> just orbs, son. You know, it's like, okay, so no bodies? No, nothing to judge by. Except for this depth of my soul. Look here. Look here and see the depth of your soul. OK, come out of that funky program you're in. You can't get on here, talk what you want to say and be who you want to be. If you can't do that on here, go find somewhere else. Create your own thing. Be there by yourself. Then you don't have to follow anybody. You see, that's what this is really about. I've been teaching this for 10 years and now you this is no longer exercise anymore. This is real world. We will go on to greater and more expanded things. Doubt it not. I am infinity and beyond. And you are too. But there are some decisions that people need to make because every single day they are supping and they are feeding a force that is destroying us and tearing us down. So the courses that you make continuously, right? That's what a course is. You should be learning something, right? Or else the courses become curses. Same word. This means that after a while, you become vexed by the continuous. If I get on here every single day and talk about the same thing, it'll vex me. It'll lock me in time. So if I'm always talking about the same person or the same topic or the same thing, I'm vexed. You see what I mean? Convex. So also, just remember about these entities. So what happened was is that many of the parents, and I got 10 more minutes here, being involved in the black magic and all the different magical systems messing around with the jinn and the stars, which is tarot, Kemet. Again, this is not a good or bad thing. It's just everybody doesn't know how to do good magic. <laughs> Basically, not. it's just like right now. You give somebody something and they do give somebody something powerful and they can do what they want to with it. But if they're ignorant, then that's what you get. You give an ignorant person a YouTube channel, that's what you get. YouTube is a lot of power. Like it's a lot of power to sit here right now and to deliver these messages to, to the beings that are listening to them. So I've taken that power and I've used it responsibly. Right. When we have all these souls that are listening to us and the ripple effects that are going to be happening from that. Making a decision also to make sure that you're aware of that and you stay in control of your own harbors. I don't care what you're on. Like basically sit in the seat of your own soul. If you got dragons you're working with, which are drugs, and you're trying to fly them off into another space too with you, at least be able to control your stuff. And if you're not controlled, then the demon's controlling you. And I will tell you that directly. If you don't have control when you're on substances, the demons are controlling you. Okay? I just want to stop for a moment to let everybody know if you lose control, the spirits are controlling you. So at that stage, you go into trance. And some people are still in trance. And that's why this world is so illusionary. 
deeper knowledge shows that when a person goes in, goes into trance, they actually see through the eyes of the spirit that's possessing them. And they see through the eyes of all the other beings that that spirit has possessed. But then when they come out of trance, most of the time, they're not, they cannot remember what went on in that trance. Okay. And even in these deeper cultures, again, I'm not, I don't want to get out of good and bad. In the whole Friati tradition, many of those women could see not only while in trance, but when they came out of trance, they remember what they saw. So there were powerful matriarchal queens who saw all this. They saw everything. They could see through the eyes of Europeans thousands of years in the future. They could see, they're showing you, even in the book that I showed, told everybody to read, she even says they were looking right into Canada at, and being a woman there at the bar, drinking, laughing. Do you see that kind of level of power, meaning that this woman in control of her spirit and, and going into the universe's power of knowledge is literally putting herself in trance, then getting possessed by a specific being. They know these beings specifically because if you get possessed by the wrong being, you go into disease right away. You get sick. You can't get rid of it. The contract goes bad, right? Or the energy goes down. So this ain't nothing you play with. But this is, these were ancestors for these people. They knew who these spirits were. And so when they would get entranced by that spirit, then they could see through that spirit's eyes and they could see everything. And they could see into the future as far as the spirit could see. And as many beings the spirit had aligned with, they could see. So they were seeing again into Canada. And then they were even telling the lady that was there, wow, you guys don't wear a lot of clothes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, like, look at how your mind is. Like, you got things kind of, like, crazy and wrong. Wow, too much pleasure. Wow, totally non-grip. Wow, there's another entity around you. Wow, you guys are lost. Wow, you don't know about Zayran. Wow, let me get out of here. Literally meaning that the details in the documentations that I've been writing across about the availability and knowledge of our ancestors giving this knowledge to us about spirits. And what are we studying? We're probably studying most of the time what the Masons put there for everybody to study. You see what I mean? Like spirits is what we need to know. We need to know about what's invisible because these things, just like they show you on the movie Glass, right? Remember the beast? What was his power mostly beside the strength? He would jump onto the back of somebody and latch on. I'm not saying go watch the movie, but he would latch onto the back of a person and he would hold them until they died. That is exactly what these entities do. They're interlopers. They plug into the back, right? The moment the person starts resonating all that darkness, which people do it all the time, starting to hate, starting to be jealous, they will drive dissension in a wedge right into your back, right into your chakra, and then come right in through there, right into your mind. They will go right up your steps, right kick right down your own door to your own temple and come in there and cause dissension with you and your family. And you will listen to them, just like they say in uh, 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 They Live. You do it to your own kind. You do it to your own kind. Also, I want to tell you about that word kind because I am kind Right. This word came to me so deep because something happened. I said, man, this shit happened because I'm too kind. And they said, whoa, seven. Whoa, whoa. Check that word out. Kind. It literally is to insist that there's only a certain type or a small amount or a specific like what kind of clothes are these or what kind of knife is this? Could it be that you're just only a certain kind of being and everybody else is not like that? I said, well, damn, shit. It definitely feels like that that's what's going on because I've been very kind for the last 10 years with all my time and all my energy and all my power and pushing into this projection. And what I've gotten back yet is, wow, like if I wasn't dependent on that, then it would be a work in progress. And that's what it is. Remember, if I came in here to actually get something for people who needed something, well, damn, that never works out in a business meeting. <laughs> that never works out in a marketing campaign. It doesn't work out anywhere. If you're coming to people who need healing, don't be looking for healing. Come to give it. But I'm telling you, the portal's closed. A new portal's open. Now we should have taken our medicine. And now we must enjoy now this expansion of this great level of consciousness we've received. We cannot keep going into the lower levels of what Donald Trump is doing. <laughs> And what Nipsey's is doing and what Takashi's and six nines and all this doing when we know that all that is summed up into a contract right now. Once again, in Freemasonry, the contracts, then, as you understand it, is between men and jinn. OK, that's what they took from the Arabs. 
And these are a specific kind of jinn, okay? First of all, <laughs> well, I just got to tell you like it is, you know, for those that are involved, I know some Masons is listening, so here you go. You've been bitched out. You've been getting fucked. That's why they say you've been fucked. Because what happens is, is that literally, even the male circumcision, which was practiced in Kemet, was actually to replicate the circumcision of a woman bleeding. Basically, the process of a woman bleeding when she's losing her virginity. To get the male body prepared to be a feminine vessel. And this is why, as Pierre Sabak was writing about, that the Arabs, the sheiks, the sheikhs, which are actually holding big jinn, right? They are jinn in male bodies, rather than using the female bodies like they used to, because they used the male and put the gin inside the male. That's why they are trying to operate. That's why they're wearing these robes like they're women. They're operating like the divine feminine and the spirits inside of them because they actually be play female to the, the more masculine entity, right? Which are all of the Sumerian, the Sumerian gods, big beards and all that shit, right? So this is real, right? And as they play prostitute to the dragon, right? Not all dragons, but to this specific dragon, as they play prostitute to the dragon, they do anything the dragon tells them because in their society, the only thing that they have in common amongst each other is they've all been fucked by the dragon. And I'm just going to say it straight, how it really is. That's literally what's happening. And so in their shame, because the dragon keeps them in shame, that's why the Catholic religion is the dragon also and set up that way. It keeps everybody in shame and in sin and under sin, which is Nanar, which is the god they worship, known as the moon. Keeps everybody under the Lord, as we talked about. And in that process, you keep getting fucked. Because you are debased and you are low. You sell out to your own brothers and sisters. You fight. You war. You bring the arts of Tubal Cain into the temple. And you deconstruct what the Most High put together. Which is the higher self in all of us collected. So you have been sighted. And this is only the beginning. When the veil drops, all the entities you've been working with, they're going to fall like a house of cards as Solomon takes back the ring. Look at what the story is telling you. Solomon lost the ring. Solomon is the temple. The temple is the tree. We lost the binding roots that keep us together. And that is formulating and growing again. But when Solomon lost the, the ring, the big demon, Asmo, hurled him empires away what this literally means is you were thrown into the land of the slaves when you lost control and your parents lost control of this vehicle and this being that we're in and there were mages underneath you some of us are very powerful so we're more some of us are more on the solomon side some of us are more on the asmodeus side meaning that in this process it's a process of growth but some had entities that they could not really keep control of. Let me just explain this very easy. See, all societies that were coming from the old times, okay? The societies from the old times, the pyramidal-based structures, what Thoth had built and what he later on improvised, okay? That system of the pyramidal structure got compromised because of the design. It was something that he decided after a while, like, or it decided this is, this is a bad design because it leaves us vulnerable at this one point, and that point is the top. It's better for everybody to actually know how to lead themselves than to have one leader. If that one leader is compromised, we still move on to the goal. <laughs> you see what I mean? So there was, a, there was knowledge that was saying, hey, this is flawed. That's what you see in the football. That's what you see when people really try to draw the flower of life. And they see that often fractions, just by fractions, that crystals are not off. So there were sign, uh, signs of a more perfected kingdom, but some wanted to stay in that distortion. Right. And now we're in that world of distortion and we must bring that perfection here. So, again, this could get into a lot of stuff. And so we just have to close it down and reopen it when we get into the next space. It's very important. There were some clues that were brought forth. I'm telling you that this is very simple. Get clear. It's an adventure. It's going to keep going. I'm going to keep powering myself on the adventure. And everybody else can keep powering themselves on the adventure. It's another fuel source. The aha moment. Aha is an energy. So as we come into more and more awareness, there will be more and more awareness and compassion for what's happening. But as far as the dissension, I won't have it in my midst. 
at all, period. If I have to lock myself behind seven doors, I will not have dissension in my midst. I will not have beings that are confused about the entities that are around them. Okay? Serious. Like, be responsible for the... That's why Oprah said, be responsible. I'm not quoting Oprah here, but I thought, shit, she said that's her most powerful mantra. What the hell is she... What is she talking about? She said, I make everybody responsible for the energy they bring to me. What she was saying was, she makes everybody responsible for the entities they bring around her. Because she knows those entities. All of them, they know about this. They are aligned. Either it's Marduk or Enlil. That's all it is for them. It's that linear. Either it's 50 or 60. It's that linear for them. And then for you, they have you mixed up and confused. Also, I say choose none of them. Five and six equals 11. More division. Like I say choose none. I say merge all these forces and make them serve your family, your tribe. Serve unity. Put them back in their place, Solomon. Remember what he says, Solomon used the demons to build a temple. Solomon is not a man. He used the demons to build a temple. That meant that they, the, the force of these lower beings were used to construct the lower worlds and the nether worlds, etc. The lower parts of the nether world, the body. But what I wanted to get at was, is that remember in all this power, because when you see your ancestors and you're like, man, you know, I wonder if they was really back there with the power. They was, they was back, they was there with the power. They were welding all these forces. It was an everyday thing for them. And in that process, just like in Thoth, what does Thoth begin his book with? He's telling you he's tired. He's telling you that, man, you know, I need to go back to the dwelling place <laughs> and actually recharge and then come forward again. But in between that time, you're going to be responsible for dealing with serpent-headed men. <laughs> Basically, being serpent-headed means that you have what's supposed to be low in your head. Put it back down there. I'm not saying kill it, destroy it. Like Dr. Kassar tells you, I, I would just give them an option. I wouldn't go into killing them. You don't know how many of these things are actually in your body or around you. Give them the opportunity to actually come into service of unity and be demanding about that. And you can only do that when they haven't overrun your camp. So I just want to say wholeness and balance vibration. If your camp is overrun, that just means that you have division inside of your mind. And if it's going on inside of your mind, then now you know why you're doing it around you and why you're saying things to people and why you're backbiting and doing all that kind of stuff because it's on you. Now, don't be mad. There's not pretty much any humans here without it that didn't have it. It's all a part of the process, but get it off. Let today be the day that it loses. Let division not be an option, but also be wise. If one chooses not to see the forces that are around them, choose to go through the expanse because anything that's the truth is going to be there. There's one path down the center of your consciousness. It's symbolic to the umbilical cord. It's in the center of the brain. This is the path that was referred to that on one side there's deep water and on the other side there's fire. That's because that, that's how the hemispheres of the mind are. Deep water, fire. And that you're to go down this path and straight and narrow is, it is. And what that means is that if you're carrying all this baggage, and you're mad and you're pissed off and you're carrying all these dark energies, you can't get down that small passage. You got too much weight. And just like I was told, you're going to wait. You're trying to get light, but you need to get light. Now I know what all that really means. I realize that it all starts in my consciousness, and that's the journey I embarked on. I've done the best that I could ever do to show every single person that, that I've been in contact with, if it was one person or if it was a thousand, if it was a bum or it was a star. It didn't matter because it was all tribe, and it always remains tribe for me. But I'm wiser now, <laughs> and I'm definitely into another passion about disclosing who these spirits are. And actually teaching people how to actually, don't email me about your spirits. I first tell you, don't, I'm, I'm, how do I get rid of No, don't email me with all of that. You know how to get rid of them already. You keep coming with that same damn story. Oh, how do I? No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about disclosure to end these beings being able to live in the darkness. So that way humans that live in the brighter state of their consciousness can start coming up with solutions for these beings. As long as they actually remain hidden, then we can't find any real medicine for them. 
I do see that they're a part of the universe and they're a part of the cosmos. I see when children are left behind. I see when someone's abused. I've been in those spaces myself and I see what it, I have a choice to become, right? And that's now just become a choice. Imagine for my great grandfather or maybe for my great grandmother, they didn't even have the choice necessarily in the phase that they were in. It started with choice, but once you get into making choices, now it must run its course. What is that called? It's called a contract, pumpkin head. So we got to watch these contracts and these agreements and these relationships that we're entering because we're also entering relationships with the person's spirits. Because what the spirits are doing is they're going into marriages with the person. And because the person has already a physical being, like let's say that animal that is a part of the body, that energy essence. And then they also have this spirit that is within them, their true essence that was given to them, the all spark. Now, if you add one more interloper into that, you already got some discomfort in that vehicle. Hey, man, you going to ride back seat or <laughs> shit, you can't be up here driving. Are you backseat driving? Yo, shut up back there. But basically, you got to understand or understand what you're harboring because every place, like I told you, I gave you all the knowledge, your portals, that's where they're coming in at. Through your smell, you smell some barbecue. Ah, shaitan rajin. Here he comes. Yo, man, you should go get a piece of that. Who is that? Ancestor wants a barbecue. You just got to be that one right there that's like, look, man, we can't keep eating this dark carbon, which is basically oxidated. Like, I'm a chemist. <laughs> so we can't eat this, but why don't we just sprinkle some of this coconut charcoal on your throat and see what we can do? See, you have to be thaw. You see, like you got to work the realm of thought in order to be able to master the mind. If you're not able to master the mind, then you're in here with Ningdamud and Igigi and all the rest of them that were all confined to the minds. They were banished to the mind. That's what we're talking about. When they super send a bad ass dark villain, where do they send him? In a stasis, into a realm in the mind. That's where we are. And this also is the womb. That's why a woman is deep. Because she knows how to navigate this. Like, we got to get these sisters back online. Like, what's happened is, is that the, the whole kingdom, you just have to build within yourself and reflect that. But the whole kingdom is laid waste. It's just like you're looking at one of those old stupas. And when we're rebuilding that, we have to start inside. But how can we build anything if someone's taking the bricks out the back? Think about that. How can I build anything when someone is tearing it down over there? Unless this is the proper level of how we need to level things. <laughs> like, and that's what you also have to have respect for. If you build something and you need to tear it, tear it all down in order to get to the next level, then maybe that's what you need to do. Level that shit out. Don't build on the top of a spire. <laughs> so all of this is the knowledge. It, it keeps cycling. It will never stop. It will not stop unless you make it stop. By keeping the breaks going on, judgments, disconnections, those are all the breaks. So I want to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. I definitely see you on the other side if it's resonating. We have taken this and made this real for us. Like I don't care what's going on outside. I could, I could master my own projections. Like I, I know everything they know and beyond. 50 and 60, I got that. That's why it was important, I guess, for me to go through the world this time. I literally became the master of money. You know, that was the earlier life and the serial entrepreneurship and just getting don't chase money or it really runs. Sneak up on it. <laughs> and with time, understand that you're a time lord and you actually stand outside of time. And if you get on it, it's like you're on a wheel. So you need to know your clock. And that's why all these ancestors, the deep ones, even the dark ones, they kept a clock with them. And they were always like, well, what time it is? Oh, shit, it's about to be portal open time. I better get myself together. Because then you have the power. Think about what I'm saying. Like some have said, well, but how am I going to get out of? Notice how maybe after some of these conversations, it's not just the words. The words, the words come behind the real force, okay? Because they're in English. But that force that's coming, Right? That force is actually what you're feeling. And that force is saying, hey, let's clear it up. So that's what it is. I got to go. Yeah, just sending love to everybody, sending compassion. Our truck is here. So I'm going to go ahead and get on this journey. 
And um, I just wanted to send everybody love. It was really on my heart to get in here today. You know, it was one of those beginning conversations because you always tell because it's got like a lot of pieces that are still open. But I also feel like that I bought great closure to this journey and I'm looking forward for the other side. So wholeness.